Welcome to Yakup's fourth podcast entitled Rehabilitation Over Incarceration. This podcast aims to humanize people deprived of liberty and things that happen inside and outside prison, jails, and penitentiaries. This podcast will show that prisons must not be viewed as a place of punishment in which offenders must face hell to discourage criminal offenses and substandard governing, the incarceration to lack up their freedom, to have a right as a prisoner, and to have a normal life even in prison. I am your host, Annette Montilla, and for today's episode, we are going to interview a person who had the experience to live in jail and prison. This is episode 4, Rehabilitation Over Incarceration, an interview with Karen Bordador. Together, let us learn how people survive the prison without a rehabilitative approach environment and how their lives are being taken care of inside the jail and their demands when it comes to the present situation of prisons and jails. Hello, Ms. Karen Bordador. Thank Hi there, Annette. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much po, for joining us today. So, Miss Karen, I have a set of questions here and you will just simply answer those. So, it will be just a simple question and answer po. So, without further ado, let's hop on to that. Okay. So, okay, Miss Karen, our first question po is, what do you think of the Philippines jail and prison system? Well, Annette, you know, being inside for like nearly five years, I realized that talagang it's sobrang ano yung facility niya it's not even at par as to what it's supposed to be. Kunyari for a population of 35 napupuno yan to 80 to 90 people. So basically wala talagang budget ang government or they're not allotting much of anything for the prison cells because you know it, the facility really looks like just what you said, like hell, talagang luma, yung hindi binibigyan ng, ano, ng pansin, wala naglilinis. Yung kami-kami lang as the detainees would do all the efforts to clean the facility. Like even buying the, ano, the panglinis ng mga walls, ng CR, even pag ayos ng CR, yung nagsashoulder lahat nun ay yung mga detainees, never the government. Very rare. As soon as binigay na sila... As soon as binigay na sa inyo ang facility, yun na yun. As in, wala na silang upgrade, wala na silang ayos. So imagine mo kung super luma yung, yung selda na yun or yung prison, wala na, wala na talagang pakailam. Siguro they would send in like mga biyaya na lang from time to time. But the facility-wise, it is really torn down. Like water is scarce. It's so difficult to even take a bath or to go to the toilet. And it's possible that the toilets are even broken. So, uh, food-wise, sobrang konti lang yung allotment ng food. Talagang papayat ka. And uh, yung portions ng pagkain, you know, compared to the outside world, talagang it's not, it's like not even like uh, one-fourth. Sobrang konti talaga. So, you know, you wonder, is this humane? You know what I mean? Like, there are other facilities that uh, yung, yung jail cell niya, Yung para lang may butas na maliit para lang magbigay yung pagkain from the outside world to the inside ng cell. Like, hindi talaga normal. Yun na lang. Mm. Very cool. Um, Miss Karen, can you walk us through what's inside po ba the, the cell? Um, how many bathrooms po yung nandun? Or ilan po kayong nagsishare? Yeah. Uh, before, so I came from an older facility. And then, uh, then I got moved to a newer one because the city of Pasig uh, actually created a new jail. So, you know, I was very lucky for that. But I, was, I got to experience the old kind of jail. And yung CR niya, dalawa lang. Tapos, nagsishare mga 50 to 80 plus people. Imagine mo, dalawa lang yun ah. Tapos yung tubig. It, there wasn't any flowing water from the gripo ng mga toilets na yun, ng mga CR na yun, wala. So, we would get from the male facility or the male jail, which was quite far, tas ang haba-haba ng hose and by orasyon. So, yung tubig niya, like we would be able to fill the pails of uh, each person. By the way, yung mga pails, siguro like, ano lang, uh, half or less lang ng 
population ang meron kasi walang space. So, mga ganito lang, mga ganyan lang na tubig. Kunyari, ganito yung balde, di ba? Ayan, ganito lang nung time na yun. Kasi sobrang, wala talagang tubig at all. Walang pumapasok. And yung CR, pumabalik yung tubig from the, ano, from the pipes. Kasi, it, it's just really old, you know? Nobody's fixing it. And, so, madami yung mga nag, ano, nag-float na mga, I don't know, mice, like yung mga nilabas na ng katawan ng mga tao. Alam mo yun, it's just, It's disgusting, really. I mean, you'd be so grossed out if you were in that situation. Tapos kulob na kulob yung place. So, you're gonna have rashes, you're gonna have boils, and uh, there will be a lot of skin problems talaga. Tsaka yung amoy, ang lakas talaga ng amoy dahil it's humid, it's hot, hindi nakakaligo yung mga tao. And uh, uh, wala pong mga shower to, ah. as in... If ever water is just cold water and if it's dirty water wala na po kami magagawa kasi sometimes the pipes are dirty and lumalabas brown water and that's not all the time but really we don't have a choice. Okay. Am um, na mention niyo po yung mga boils, yung mga skin condition. Paano po ina-address kapag nagkakaroon po ng ganun sa sa, sa prison po? Okay, so in prison, you would assume na may doctor my nurse na may mga uh, medical assistance wala as in zero of course they you know they would hire yung mga jail officers slash nurse but they're not really practicing you know what i mean i mean they just studied nursing but they don't have that uh, uh, the title at all so they don't really give 100% <laughs> um yung yung alam mo yun, yung medical needs ng mga tao When I was there, several people have died due to ailments that they couldn't even address. Kasi, first, walang budget. Walang budget for any medicines, really. Siguro ang, ang pwede lang maibigay nila ay vitamins. And uh, that's it. Kunyari kung may cancer ka, nakulong ka, or uh, any sicknesses. Wala. Walang budget for that. So, ang gagawin namin, kami-kami mga detainees, yung magpuput together na money, eh, wala na lang. Pero yung mga tao sa loob, wala nga silang pambayad ng bill. Hirap na hirap na yung pamilya nila. Tapos, they're gonna rely all these needs from us. So, what would happen is, sometimes, if someone enters and they have cancer, they would just die in the facility. And it's really, really sad tapos alam mo yung nakikita namin na hirapan sila they're supposed to be in hospitals they're supposed to be in um in mental facilities but they're not they're being placed in jail uh, without care of their condition and we just let them be i mean we ha- we have no choice we can only contribute to painkillers and i really don't um support painkillers pero kasi sobrang iba nasa stage 4 na alam mo yun hindi na talaga nila kaya So it's so sad. Tapos, kunyari, they, they try to get uh, medical, uh, kunyari, gusto nila makita ng doktor, lalabas sila ng facility, pahirapan pa yun sa, ano, sa judge. Like, hindi mo alam kung ma-approve yan. And if ever, sobrang tagal ng proseso. So parang, uh, yung, ang dami mo ng sakit na nadagdagan, stress na stress ka pa, tapos ang bagal pa ng, ano, ng movement, ng papel mo to even see a doctor. So if you don't have support from family, you really will not survive. Well, that's really sad to hear. Um, you mentioned po din um earlier yung sa food. Um, what do you normally eat po there? Uh, yung endless <laughs> na kinakain doon ay upo. Wala nga tapos ang upo. <laughs> okay. As in, uh, upo lang talaga. And then, NFA rice. If not upo, then it would be uh, yung beans. Ang tawag. Alam mo, it's, it's been a year na rin naman kasi. Uh, yung, uh, yun, beans or upo or uh, ano yung glass. <laughs> we, we make it social kasi. We make it sound social. <laughs> Kaya like, ano, uh, parang sotanghon. Ayun, sotanghon. Mm-hmm. And mind you, ah, wala tong mga sahog na mga kaartehan like to make it flavorful it's plain and sobrang konti lang niya talaga at siguro mag mag sobrang malit lang na portion 
And uh, sometimes, you know, if we're so lucky that they we have one longanisa, one small mm-hmm. longanisa, and we're already super celebrating with that amount of food. Pero sobrang konti talaga. Kasi I'm sure they can a lot more for the food, but it's not getting to the detainees at all. So it's sobrang little food. Mm. Okay po, Ms. Karen. So, for the next question po, Ms. Karen, how important is rehabilitative environment for the well-being of our PLDs and the general populace? You mean PDLs? Yes po. <laughs> PDLs. Um, yeah, I suppose it's very important to rehabilitate people inside because it's their time and their chance to have reform, to change, to to change their mindsets because a lot of the people in prison mind you they're not all uh at fault ah kasi madaming nalalagay doon na mali naman yung accusation hindi talaga sila and they're not supposed to be in jail but since you know they're in jail i find it like it should be a place of schooling of education kasi what are you going to do with your time diba you have to improve yourself no matter where you are no matter what happened to you so instead of being idle Like, I really enforce, when I was there, education. Kaya, I encouraged to have books brought in. Books that are Tagalog-English. Kasi English, hindi naman masyadong nag english yung mga tao doon. In fact, a lot of them don't know how to read and write. So, through ALS, Alternative Learning System, ayun, natuturuan sila. Pero ang hirap magturo ng mga taong above 20s or mga ano na yung mga hindi kasi learning age ang 30s ganyan yung parang tinatamad na sila or nahihiya na sila mag-study kaya kailangan mo talaga i-push na kanila na it's it's required to educate yourself and yeah in, in that also facility you can learn to have businesses like when mare um uh, mga banana chips making, or yung mga simple businesses that they can do outside. So, it's a place talaga that should be a place of um getting more ability, skills, talents, para paglabas, diba? you're more confident that you can actually survive doing legitimate things, legal things. Kasi, you know, you you can't do things that are too fast because some of them are okay. illegal or very dangerous, diba? Anything fast can't last. So, yun. Dapat yun ang ituro talaga sa loob ng jail. Yung mga businesses, you know, self-esteem, how how they can grow um, holistically, emotionally, like, kunyari, spiritually, ayan, being closer to God kasi mas may moral compass ka sa lahat ng mga decisions mo. And uh, intellectually, by reading, you know, getting education. Okay. That's nice po. So, um, napaka, um, ngayon ko lang po nalaman na pwede ka rin palang matuto. Marami ka rin palang matututunan inside the inside Yeah. The Alam mo ba, meron pa nga silang mga ano, classes na for therapists. Yung para may, meron kang certificate of being a legitimate na, uh, yun, Parang pwede kang magbigay ng masahe, ganyan sa labas. So, ang ganda talaga if people with skills outside right now can teach doon sa loob ng jail. So, maybe in the future, they can hire them. At the same time, it encourages those inside to actually do, you know, normal jobs. Jobs that can actually give them pay at the same time. It will, you know, make sure they won't get back to jail or they won't return. <laughs> Well, for the third question po, Ms. Karen, why is there a need to prioritize a rehabilitative environment for person deprived of liberty or persons under police custody? Yeah, pag police custody kasi, iba yung treatment nila. Like, ikaw, you're just waiting sa precinct. So, hinihintay mo lang talagang magkaroon ka ng kaso or makalabas ka sa initial stage. So doon doon sa doon sa part na yun, wala talagang any reform, wala talagang nangyayari sa iyo. Naka, nakaupo ka lang and then waiting for your time if you're gonna go home or if you're gonna, you know, push forward the case, with the case. So, yeah, it would be nice if pag nasa precinct pa lang, meron na sila mga rehabilitative uh, mga projects siguro like sana 
may mga priests sila dinadala, yung mga yung mga uh, nuns, you know, spiritually sana tinuturuan na sila ng mga magandang bagay and also mga educational stuff. But anyway, once you enter the real facility, yan pag may kaso ka na talaga, you're brought to the city jail and that's where all the rehabilitative uh like activities happen. But I don't know if this applies to all the jails. Huh? My jail was very active, but I heard other jails are still behind because they don't have the facility, they don't have the space to have uh, outsiders come in. And especially now, may pandemic, wala talagang nangyayaring much movement. If ever, yung mga jail officers lang talaga yung nagtuturo sa mga, sa mga uh nakulong and syempre that would also mean na hindi sufficient ang natut- natuturo nila kasi hindi naman sila experts de ba so it's really really important kasi you know to while you're inside you will honestly feel na wala ka ng future wala ka nang mapupuntahan wala nang bukas para sa iyo kasi nakulong ka eh it's so dark everything is like enclosed you don't see the outside world you don't see opportunities you only see the fear of nothingness so with you know people coming in bringing in new insights you know new possibilities in your world na uy hindi lang pala yung yung malit mong circle yung pwede mong bigyan pansin kasi pag babalik ka dun sa environment mo noon babalik ka na naman sa maling gawa so pag gumasok yung mga nagbibigay ng skills nagbibigay ng opportunities parang nagiging enlightened yung mga tao na, ay, I have talent pala, I can do this, I can do that, and I can double on businesses that are legitimate. So, it's so important sa time na yun, kasi, hindi siya, ano, hindi, hindi ka distracted eh, pag nasa loob ka ng jail, you're focused on wanting better in life, and having a life, like, you just wanna, you wanna improve yourself, kasi, nako, may naghihintay sa'yo sa labas, diba? and you wanna make them proud. So it's really a time that people are gonna absorb so much. So why make them idle? Give them every single education they can have in order for them to be strong enough when they get out of the facility. That's really nice, po. So you've mentioned po na in CTJ po mas active po, marami po kayong activities. I just wanna know, Miss Karen, what are the common problems that you faced when you were there? Uh. For the activities, you mean? Yes, bro. Uh, siguro mga walang follow-through. Kunyari, we have like one activity. I mean, it's just, you don't get to practice it. Siyempre, kasi nasa loob ka pa, di ba? And, and ang hirap din magpapasok kasi ng mga, ano, ng mga teachers na consistent. Kasi jails are not the most beautiful place. They're not hotels, you know. They don't look so inviting and friendly. To them, it's just charity. I mean, if they're really heartfelt at galing sila sa prison themselves, then they would have the heart to keep returning. But uh, it, it's not always like that. And also, ano pa ba? Uh, walang refresher. I mean, after you learn, syempre, you'd forget agad-agad. Or kung wala, yung sh- your certificate, sobrang bagal ibigay sa sa'yo, ay eh, yun yung habol mo, diba? certificate para lang uh, meron kang proof na you're able to study this and you can practice this, practice it in the outside. And also, hindi variated yung mga skills na natuturo sa amin. Sobrang paulit-ulit. Alam mo yun, sometimes paulit-ulit kasi wala na silang may turong iba. konti lang talaga yung tumutulong sa jail. Kasi considered outcast yung mga people sa prison eh. Pero inisip nila, eh dapat magdusa kayo sa loob, may ginawa kayo masama. So, hindi na bibigyan ng pansin ang jails when it comes to allotment of mga blessings, like mga skills, ganyan. Hindi nila naisip na jail is the place to put all your love to because, you know, these are people that will eventually reform and they'll be good role models if they are completely change Siyempre, to other from other people's efforts then by bringing in you know new things inside so wala wala masyadong bagong pumapasok it's the same thing and i think that would be that's the problem not a lot of people consider jail as a place to share their knowledge hmm. 
Oh, for the last question po, Miss Karen, what are your dema- what are your demands or campaigns to forward the humanization and democratization of our prisons and jails? Demands? <laughs> um, I don't want to demand, but I do want to encourage the government to allot a bigger budget for prisons. Feeling ko naman may budget sila, hindi lang naibibigay talaga sa prisoners eh. Because majority of those people inside don't even know how to speak for themselves. Ang hirap mag-complain pag magpa-complain ka. Ikaw pa yung lagot, ikaw pa yung mawawalan. Kaya nananahimik na lang yung nasa loob kasi inisip din nila na wala silang say. But me, you know, I've experienced it and I have a voice. So I know they have budget. So it should be given to them. Like there should be people that could actually check and, you know, check and balance kung totoo bang nabibigyan ng, ng uh, budget yung facilities. Kasi kulang talaga sa pagkain, you know. Food pa lang can really encourage someone to have good energy for the day, to to do extremely well. Tapos, alam mo yun, yung exercise, lahat yun eh, like, being able to nourish someone's body is so important. So, food should be nutritious. Alam mo yun, it shouldn't just be because it's cheap. I mean, upo every day does not discourage, it does not encourage you to be a happy person. <laughs> and a sad person and a mad person, someone who's gugil, can do bad things. Alam mo yun, uh, pag mainit ulo mo, pwede ka mag-create ng chaos. And that, you know, it happens a lot inside jail kasi nga, Walang pagkain, masyado, konti lang talaga. Nakakabatre, gusto ko na iba to yung, yung, yung electric fan, yung mga ganon. And speaking of which, wala din po kami mga electric fan that time. We had to purchase ourselves. Kunyari, they're gonna buy, bibili sila. Uh, we had two electric fans na, ano, na uh, given by the jail. But we still need a lot more. Like, just because the facility is given does not mean you na yun. Dapat the support continues on because people come in and out. So, in other words, may wear and tear, di ba? Masisira ang facility. Sino, sino mag-take care kami, kami? Eh, hindi naman namin gusto makulong, di ba? So, dapat continuous talaga yung support nila. Like, cleaning materials, wala. Sino mag-shoulder nun? Yung mga prisoners na naman. A lot of the things inside jail were actually uh, provided by the prisoners, which is very odd, the ba? Dapat it should be the government. They place people inside, so they should be the one to contribute to, you know, bettering their lives inside. Uh, sana meron mga workout stuff, like have an actual library with the government's, you know, like budget to provide the books. Um... CR, dapat kailan malinis talaga yon dahil you can get a lot of sicknesses from a dirty facility, a dirty CR, a CR without water. That's crazy, di ba? Pwede bang hindi maligo? <laughs> dapat naliligo lahat, di ba? And uh, we need to a lot medical help talaga. Kasi ang daming may sakit. Lalo sa time na to, everyone has to be healthy. And you can't be healthy if you don't have medicines. You know, yung magbabayad ng mga medicines mo, kami-kami din. Grabe, bigat na nga ako dun sa kaso ko. Pati ba yung medicines, kami, na, kami din. So we really had to care for one another inside. And we had to put together budgets. And that's not that's not cheap. It's really a lot for someone who's already in a very uh, bad situation. So, yeah, I think, you know, the government should really focus and give love to the people inside prison. Plus, dapat bilisan nila yung mga kaso. Like, they need to hurry the judges to uh, hear the cases of the people inside because ang dami sa kanila sa loob, nakaka-10 years, 5 years, 7 years, me, nearly 5 years. Yes. To just hear cases. Kasi, was, you know, ang dami lang pinapasok na prisoners, pero ang bagal gumalaw ng kaso. Sobrang bagal talaga. If they need to add judges, they need to add like 
uh, mga lawyers, please do because so much lives are wasted inside just by hearing their cases. So time is gold and I hope they, ano, they value people regardless of what they think they've done inside. Okay po. So parang based po sa narinig ko sa inyo, so parang kapag mahirap ka and nakakulong ka, parang hindi ka rin makakasurvive kasi hindi mo din kayo mag- ma-provide yung mga pagkukulang sa facilities natin like yung electric fan, ganun po ba? And in terms naman po kapag may sakit sila, kailangan ikaw din mismo, shoulder mo din, ganun po talaga. Yeah, as in, ikaw talaga magkakarga sa sarili mo. Pero pag pinasok ka sa selda, syempre, family na kayo. You try your best to help one another. Eh, paano kung ba- pangit din o galing niya, di ba? Kung <laughs> siya sa mundo, walang tumukulong talaga sa kanya. So, mahihirapan siya to survive some more. But, you know, kung sobrang ano ka naman, uh, if you're madiskarte, you will do services for the other people inside na may pera para you can earn. But that will still not be enough. Like, to earn inside jail, kunyari, magsaservice ka, mag-aayos ka ng mga gamit ng kung sino-sino, you'll only earn 150 pesos or 100 pesos a week. Imagine, a week. And then, you will survive through, siguro, kung mga bigay-bigay lang ng mga ibang fellow prisoners mo. Pero, that's still not a lot. That's still so little. So yes, if you're poor, wala kang say, wala kang family, mahihirapan ka talaga ng todo-todo. Kaya these are people na bigyan, kailangan bigyan ng love kasi sa sobrang hardship nila, kaya sila gumagawa ng hindi maganda kasi desperado sila. Diba? Kung hindi mo bibigyan ng support na yan, gagawa at gagawa yan ng mali. Kasi hindi nila makuha ng tama, kaya gagawa sila ng mali. Ayun. Okay, um, honestly, Miss Karen, talagang ina-admire po namin kayo lahat dito. Kasi kung tutusin po, Miss Karen, laya na kayo eh. You can just enjoy and, co- and continue your life here dito sa real world. Pero you still give your time talking about your experience. And you're also being the voice of the people inside. So, thank you so much po, Miss Karen. And so... Thank you po, Ms. Karen. And that concludes our podcast for the fourth episode. Um, again, thank you so much, Ms. Karen Bordador, for joining us today. But before I forget, we, the Youth Advocates for Civilized and Appropriate Conduct towards PLDs in the Philippines, would like to give a certificate as a sign of appreciation.